Alright, hey, what's going on guys? This is Dan here again and we are back for another episode of Monster Fish Files. And in this one we're going to be talking about the Florida Gar. Now before we get into this, I just wanted to apologize for no videos. Uh, I, was meant, I was meant to be uploading daily for these fish files, but my phone actually got ran over by a truck. It's currently being repaired, hopefully, because it's got all my pictures on it. I nearly lost my Instagram, but I managed to get it back. Anyways, moving on. Um, big shout out to Tyler's Aquarium for providing me with some good footage of his Florida Gar. Um, I'm proper sorry if it ain't a Florida Gar, but uh, it did look seriously like a Florida Gar. Or maybe a um, Spotted Gar, but I'm almost 100% sure it's a Florida Gar. Because that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. The Florida Gar is a species of Gar found in, in the US in a river called Savannah. It reaches a length of up to 3 feet or 91 centimeters and feeds on young zooplankton. The young gar feeds on zooplankton uh, as well as small fish. The adults mainly feed on fish, shrimp and crayfish and although the gar is edible it's not considered a delicacy anywhere which is what I like to hear because you know gars are like cool fish they're not that common you know they're going to be eaten to get any more endangered. A mid-range to size of the floor Florida gar measures from around 51 to 132 centimeters, which is crazy big. A weight of about 1.3 kg to 1 to 4.3, which is like which is heavy, you know, for a fish. And this is only a mid-sized one. So, and according to the GIGFA, the record weight for this species is 10 kg, and that's actually really heavy for a Florida gar. And some people keep these in their aquariums, so that's like a, a quite a bit more weight in the fish tank, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, moving on to another topic here, we have the uh, details of this fish, and it has black irregular spots all over the top of its head, following all the way through its body, which is really nice to look. It also has it on its anal fin, which is which makes the fish look pretty beautiful, if you ask me. It's an awesome fish. It looks pretty similar to the spotted gar, but the spotted gar has got like I think it has more perfect circles if you'd say. Now moving on to its jaw. Now everyone knows a gar has long jaws, but this one actually has a short one, a short snout, with um only a single row of teeth. Um on its upper and lower jaws. So yeah, if you look at an alligator gar's jaw, it has about three rows of teeth. But this one only has a single row of teeth, which is quite interesting to know. And also a pretty cool fact here is they don't actually have any scales on their throat. This allows for like fish to sit in their throat and then obviously like it can bulge out if it's like bigger than its jaw. If you know what I mean? So say if you fed it a big fish, it could like stretch out its like the lower the its lower jaw so it could fit into its mouth. Which it, so obviously it won't be able to escape then, even though I don't think it would escape all those teeth. Now moving on to the topic of reproduction, this occurs in like the winter or early spring. Uh, the male and the female will go to shallow weedy waters and then the um, eggs actually stick to plants around there. The hatched young, they actually stick, they actually stay near the end of the snout of the, um, I'm not sure if it's the um, male or female but they do stick to one of the snouts and they stay attached to about two centimeters long which is say if you have a um, let's say a three foot gar with a two centimeter long gar in its nose I wonder how many could it could actually fit I'm not sure how many eggs they lay I don't think it's too many because you, you don't see many gars so I don't think it would be too many because if you take the snakehead for example and you get a hundred and fifty thousand eggs every two years snakeheads are really overpopulated but if you take a gar which isn't really overpopulated at all you don't see them that much um, yeah, they probably don't lay as much eggs. So that's gonna wrap up for this video, guys. I hope you did enjoy. If you was to ask me, I'd keep your. If you was to keep a gar in your fish tank, I would keep it at around 28 degrees. 30 might be alright. A little bit lower, maybe. They are prehistoric creatures, so you know they can. They are a bit hot. They are really hardy. If you watched um, King of DIY Joey, his um Halloween special video, you can see he had a gar and it jumped out of the tank, smashed through the glass and then survived in a bucket overnight which is crazy crazy like, I don't think any other fish 
would have survived that, especially it being in the winter time, because obviously that's when October is. Well, not winter, but I don't know. It's not winter in the UK in October. I'd feed, I'd feed your girl probably some small fish if you can get hold of them. That'd probably be best. If you watch uh, the video I put in here, it's actually Tyler's one, and he's eating a rainbow trout. I think I think it's a rainbow trout. Uh, and that's pretty crazy. That was a pretty giant fish. Um, so yeah, definitely go and check out um, Tyler's Aquarium. Link will be in the description. And uh, sorry if I'm like, a bit stuck reading this video. Um, it's because I'm trying to get back into the swing of, uh, you know, comment commentating. Um, so yeah, uh, excuse me for that. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more fish bowls.